Hello, my name is Dr. Ellen Steinberg and I'm the Director of Obstetric Anesthesia here at Stony Brook University Hospital. I'm proud to present you this educational video about epidural anesthesia created by some of our residents. The Obstetric Anesthesia team is here 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and our goal is to provide you with the best possible care for you and your baby. Enjoy. Hello and congratulations, parents-to-be. It is an exciting time as you await the arrival of the newest member of your family. Today I want to provide you with more information about one of the options available for pain relief during labor called an epidural anesthetic. Hopefully this will make your, an informed decision about whether an epidural at Stony Brook is the right choice for you. The goal of the Division of Obstetric Anesthesiology at Stony Brook is to provide you with a safe and effective pain relief throughout this exciting time. Epidural anesthesia is a safe and effective method for providing pain relief during labor. About 80 to 90 percent of our laboring patients receive an epidural anesthetic. It involves the placement of a small plastic catheter or tube into the space between the lumbar vertebrae or bones in the back. The catheter is introduced through a needle which is used to identify the correct space. Once that catheter is inserted, local anesthetic agents can be administered continuously to significantly reduce the pain of labor. You'll also be able to control your own pain using what's called a patient-controlled epidural analgesic or PCEA. The epidural pump is programmed to deliver a small preset dose of medication when you push a button. You don't have to worry about giving yourself too much medication as the machine is designed to prevent this from happening. Current techniques use low concentrations of local anesthetics and narcotics so that most patients will have adequate muscle strength to push effectively with the epidural in place. Hi, I'm Dr. Smith. The epidural has many advantages over other forms of labor pain relief. Most importantly, the mother is awake and able to fully participate in the birth of her baby, and the baby is also awake and vigorous. Numerous studies demonstrate that epidural anesthesia provides superior pain relief compared to all other treatments for labor pain. Furthermore, a reduction in maternal stress has also been shown to benefit the baby. In addition, if cesarean delivery becomes necessary, a higher concentration of local anesthetic can be given through the epidural catheter to provide adequate anesthesia for the surgery. Placing an epidural is a sterile procedure. Therefore, we ask that the other parent and all support people to leave the room while the procedure is being performed. To place an epidural, we will need you to sit up straight on the edge of the bed. You will relax your shoulders down and you will arch your lower back out. A nurse will be present to help you maintain this position throughout the epidural placement. For some women late in labor, it may be difficult to take this position. This position will need to be maintained for several minutes to ensure safe placement of the epidural. Large movements during the procedure can make placing an epidural challenging, so it is important to maintain this position and communicate with your provider. The anesthesia provider will talk you through each step as he prepares to place the epidural. First, he will clean your back with a cold cleaning solution. He will prepare you prior to placing this cleaning solution on your back. After placing the cleaning solution, he will numb up your back with a local anesthetic and then place the epidural. A small percentage of patients may develop a headache. The risk of this happening is about 1 to 3 percent. While this type of headache is self-limited, it can be frustrating and uncomfortable for the patient. This headache can be treated and the anesthesia team is always available for this purpose. Backache can occur after epidural anesthesia. It is important to understand, however, that about 50% of patients will develop backache after delivery, whether or not they have an epidural placed. Other common side effects include itchiness, a small bruise or scab at the epidural insertion site, and other serious complications such as reaction to the local anesthetic, nerve injury, infection, and bleeding are extremely rare. Finally, despite our best efforts, an epidural will on occasion not provide adequate pain relief. In such cases, the anesthesiologist may replace the epidural catheter at a different spot. Only certified anesthesia personnel may place an epidural. This includes anesthesia residents, certified nurse anesthetists, or an attending anesthesiologist. So a question we commonly encounter on the labor and delivery service is, can I eat after I get an epidural? The answer is yes. So after you're admitted to labor and delivery and after you receive an epidural, you'll be able to eat certain things, which will include soda, jello, and some types of juices. 
Following delivery, the epidural removal is an easy procedure. The nurse will help you lean forward slightly in the bed, and the anesthesiologist will come and remove the tape and the epidural catheter from your back. You may have read or heard from your friends that getting an epidural may increase the likelihood of you needing a cesarean section. That is simply not true. In fact, this once very controversial issue has been resolved by many scientific studies that show getting an epidural does not independently increase the likelihood of you needing a cesarean delivery. While most people can safely receive epidural anesthesia, some patients simply are not suitable candidates. Your anesthesiologist will discuss this with you in detail if they feel that this is the case. We sincerely hope that you found this information useful and educational in helping you decide whether or not epidural anesthesia is right for you. If you have any further questions, please follow up with your obstetrician, and if they feel so necessary, they will refer you to an anesthesiologist prior to the delivery date to speak with you more.